what has really changed over the last three decades or so is the motivation, the enthusiasm, as well as trying to move this into the space of where the policy actors are. So a woman coming up and saying, I want to do environmental economics, where the subject itself is, was not so developed, uh, meant that I had to go to the field. I had to prove myself. But the motivation comes always, always from the vulnerable. Welcome to another episode of Policy Talks. Today, I'm delighted to introduce you to Professor Purnamita Das Gupta. Uh, Professor Das Gupta is with Institute of Economic Growth in New Delhi and has been an experienced researcher in the area of environmental economics, uh, climate change and climate change and health recently that she's been working on. So welcome, uh, Professor Das Gupta. So my first question to you, uh, Purnamita, is um, how do you view uh, uh, the uh, issues of climate equity um, changing over a period of time, especially from the global south versus global north perspective. Uh, tell us this, the, the, the entire gamut of how things have changed over the period of time, what strategies have been used. Uh. Thank you for this opportunity to share my thoughts about this journey, shall we say. As a researcher, I think there have been there's been a lot of progress, whether we cut it in terms of the global north and the global south, or we see it in terms of in India doing what it needs to do, and or we go more subnational and look at what different actors within India have been trying to do. But I think what has really changed over the last three decades or so is the motivation, the enthusiasm amongst particularly those working at community levels and researchers, as well as trying to move this into the space of where the policy actors are. So this has been a journey where climate equity has also evolved as we have learned more. Sometimes in a very unfortunate and hard way when the impact has hit. Mm. And sometimes through science and knowledge generation and where we try to keep getting ourselves better prepared. What I've observed about you over the years that I've been associated in some other capacity um, as joint researchers or as a, uh, as people who are working together, uh, you have very keen interest in, um, you know, field work, orientation towards working from the ground. Uh, I have seen many other people who have been an armchair researchers, but you have always uh, looked forward for an opportunity to work on ground. When you go to these areas and what are the things that you're looking at it from perspective of climate change and how community resilience are being built, built up or not being built up, uh, what has been your experience so far? I must uh, confess there was very little interest uh, in an economic student trying to do the environment. It was an area dominated by males. It was an area dominated by, by something called environmental science within mainstream universities. There were no mobile phones. There was far less connectivity. So a woman coming up and saying, I want to do environmental economics, where the subject itself is, was not so developed, uh, meant that I had to go to the field. I had to prove myself. I had to learn about the subject. I realized that I'm, the only way my research is going to convince me that I've done something meaningful in my own little way would be if I kept talking to those who are at that grounded level. So even, even when I've got opportunities to maybe um, be an armchair economist, as you described it. Um, I've always tried my best to follow it up uh, with a visit uh, at a ground level. 
I see that you have now shifted slowly into into inquiring, uh, you know, from the ground level in terms of the heat stress and its impact on the people. Tell us a little more about how we are going to do about it. And I'm sure we'll come back on the findings uh, as you finish your research. But tell us uh, how did it start? What are the initial uh, observations that you have and how are we looking at climate change health, particularly in the heat stress regions of India? So my interest in looking at heat comes from the fact that I had opportunity to talk to construction workers in two cities. In the case of the construction workers, I was told that it's been a great regulatory success in both these cities that they have managed to implement a change in working hours for the construction workers during high temperature or summer seasons. So the public health constituency, the agencies responsible for regulations, and certain employers who are responsible employers felt that they had done a good deed. But these laborers shared that it meant so many lesser hours available for doing overtime work. So it meant a reduction in their daily earnings. The women laborers felt it took away their family time, cooking time, time to look after children in the evenings. So I, it motivated me to kind of try and understand what could be a feasible solutions in this space. Then I looked at what has been done in terms of the literature on this. And there's a fair amount of clinical or lab studies coming out of the West on the impacts of heat on health. That is well established, particularly for certain con con uh, constituencies. And what I found missing, for instance, was children in the school going age group. And when I discussed this with some of these authors from very well established universities, an interesting response that emerged was that for the developed world, where most of this research had taken place, once a child is in the school environment, it is a protected space where the exposure to heat is not such an issue. And you see this, this uh, highlighted the gap filling requirement in our context. So there are many reasons for doing this research, but the motivation comes always, always from the vulnerable. Absolutely. A uh, lot of young researchers watch us uh, on you know, policy talks. Uh, so what will be your message to them, uh, especially young PhD students or people who want to work in this area? What are the things that you will have to tell them? I think I see a great uh, potential in our youngsters because they have a lot of resources at their disposal that we did not have earlier. They, many of them uh, get very motivated through use of internet resources, media, social media. It's a very powerful tool if you can use it well. What I think they have to look up to us for is in terms of giving them the right guidance in the kind of skill sets they should build. There's a huge opportunity in terms of what are the things that one can do. But it also turns into a challenge sometimes. This, I think, is something which we, with our experience, can really help and guide them with. The other thing I want to tell them is to have courage. Mm -hmm. To have the courage to do things that really motivate you. And stand up, stand up for your research, stand up for your findings. Yeah. 
That's a good, uh, you know, um, statement to end our conversation here. Um, but we look forward to meeting you again to know more about the research that you are going to find in recent next uh, couple of years. So thank you so much, Punmita, for uh, coming to our studio and also having a beautiful conversation with us. Thank you so much. My pleasure.